The Illinois app is available now on Apple and Google Play Store. Download the app, get the latest news, stream our podcasts, watch interviews, and listen to Illinois Radio Live. Download the app right now. This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. Welcome, 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 welcome. You know, like... You know what we like to do at this <laughs> time of the day. We bring you guys some of the illest guests from around the city and globe. And today we got Matt Muse in the building. Hello, yeah. Did I, I, did I want to make sure I said it correctly. No, yeah. The last name. Muse? Woo! Yeah. Cool with me. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, he only doing that because I be on him about the pronouncing people's people names. The only way right. you can mess it up is like Moose. People be saying Matt Moose. Moose. Yeah. Now, ain't no O-O-S in there. Right, yeah, that's like, petty. How do you get Moose? It's I, yeah. Muse, Muse, both of them work. Yeah, she got on yeah. me earlier for messing up somebody's yeah. name. So now I'm I just want us aware. to come correct. You feel me? It's like, like, the, like the Pokemon. Mew. What is he? Like Mewtwo? Muse. Muse. Okay, I said it right. Yeah, yeah, you Muse. said it right. Yeah. Like Fuse right. TV. Muse. Yeah, bam. You don't, you don't, you don't do Pokemon. Not a thing. I mean, no. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you, look, you look like what? I'm like <laughs> Pokemon. That's the only one I know. I mean, what, <laughs> what, what was your favorite Pokemon? You Me? know, since we you. Uh, yeah, I like Blastoise. I like mm. Water Pokemon. Is that the Squirtle. little thingy? The little squishy thingy? The no, Blastoise had like guns on his. He was a turtle oh. with guns on his back. Oh, mm-hmm. I fuck with yeah. turtles, yeah. so yeah. I might have to figure out what's his name. Blastoise. 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 Yeah, like that was one of my. Favorite. Oh, but Blastoise. Oh, yeah. got you. So he with the shit. Yeah, yeah, that was one of my favorites. To him, Charizard. Right. Yeah, all of the all of the starters from the yeah. beginning. Yeah, po- I, but I like Pikachu. Pokemon. So like, I I got a vast. You was playing that Pokemon Go when it came out. I did it in the beginning. Then I'm gonna tell you a messed up story. I did it in the beginning, and then I was giving my brother a ride somewhere, and I was trying to catch a Pokemon while I was driving, <laughs> and I almost had a car accident. And I deleted it from from my phone. I what is you me. doing driving around trying I to tweet, catch Pokemon? I was tweeting like them bad stories about people like getting injured or like dying playing it. I was almost that nigga. So I was like, I'm never doing this. Wow. I literally haven't done it since that day. Horrible idea. <laughs> yeah. It was like a Tauros like right in front of my car. And like, yo, mine. It's like trying to get forgets, the Pokemon. It gets what you're doing. Like, so you, no, that Pokemon's not really right there. Like, <laughs> you out there throwing po- po- you in the car throwing <laughs> Pokeballs. <laughs> While it's a car coming. And I had my little brother in the car too. So I was like, hey, you tweaking, bro. You got to chill. Oh, yeah. damn, man. Yeah, so um, so I just play it on the I have like a DS And I just play the, the, the DS game You're you taking it back yeah, I just be, You I have just one of the newer you know? DS's Cause my little brother has like a new one Okay He probably has a Switch No not the Switch oh. I think it's the 3DS, 3DS. Yeah, I, yeah. Got, I got a 3DS It's like yeah. with the bigger They have like yeah, the bigger the screens big terrain, yeah, yeah I used to fuck with the Nintendo DS When I was working on this project I was playing Pokemon Black the whole time And like really? I beat it right around the time When I finished it yeah. Wow We gonna get into yeah. that too So actually you know for for our audience, uh, definitely we got to get some background on you, like where you're yeah. from, um, and and you know your influences and things of that nature. Yeah, I'm from the South Side of Chicago. Um, da, 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 yeah, let me start. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I like the main place I grew up at was 81st and Kenwood, so like the Avalon Park slash Chatham area was like where I you know was around. Went to Morgan Park High School. Um, what year you graduate? 2010. Oh, yeah. oh shit! Yeah, TBT. Yeah. I was, I, no, yeah. Let me show. She up. was still a baby yeah. at that time. I, I, first of all, I was not a baby. I was in high school, <laughs> yeah, I was in high school. You was in high school. That was like my sophomore year. Yeah, I graduated like, in 2013. So okay, yeah, yeah right after me. Yeah, yeah. she wasn't that much of a baby. But yeah, but I was a youngin in these streets. Yeah. So okay, Southside. Yeah, like common. Kanye what like Southside got wow right. Common's the f- I think that's the first I've ever heard of influences on that's the show crazy, I've heard like, I think I've heard one other person say Common I can't remember who? the guest name right now Common like, is not Common like, yeah that's true no, when, no I pun first, when I first started listening like you couldn't tell me anything if it wasn't Common what's your I didn't favorite Common song mm, I have a lot The Food is probably my favorite Common The Food Ooh. with Kanye West mm. off B yeah, that's probably my favorite okay. comment song. I was listening uh, to Shy City today. Funky for you, Shy City. It yeah. was so crazy that came on. I'm watching the bud, <laughs> and Shy yeah. City came on. Shy like, City is one so of my Chicago, favorites too. Yeah. Love, and, love is one yeah. of my favorite songs too. R- Rhyme Fest actually was the uh, Bud Billiken's um, what they call it, the, the Grand the Marshal. Yeah, he was the Grand Marshal of, of uh, yeah, really. For Bud Rhyme Billiken Fest today. is getting really heavy into like Chicago politics. I, I mean, believe. he he's been heavy. well, not been in it, but I'm like he still has his hand in that, so that's cool. Yeah, just to see that representation. Now, you know, so you went to Morgan Park, yeah. South Side. What led you to actually get into to music? Yeah. Man, it's just like, I don't know. Like, I guess because, like, I'm, I'm not answering your question yet. I guess it's like a lot of, like, people are fresh to me. So I've just been answering that question so much lately. 
and right. I just wish I could answer it differently, but I literally am saying the same thing. So it's okay. just like, I just feel like I'm regurgitating it, but I'm like, how can I answer this differently? There's no other way. My dad is the reason I got into music. So like, my dad made house music. Um, my mom was in the choir. Um, like, and I grew up just with music all around me all I, the time. I know, you know, uh, first thing, first instrument you played was piano. Yeah. yeah Why? Why it. piano though? Out of all uh, My parents is like, y'all gotta play the piano. Like, for, regardless of whatever else y'all doing like they made it was like a mandate that me and my siblings played the piano that was like their thing and I, I i don't know if it was like an intelligence thing like maybe the way the mind discipline. works with and discipline too but they like made us learn piano for like two two three years straight i mean if, um, if it wasn't piano do you see yourself playing anything else? i played the trumpet too when i was younger Ooh. um yeah i i mean in hindsight no like i wasn't much into instrumentation when i was younger like it was just like I liked science and music a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But like now in hindsight, I definitely would have liked to play the drums. That probably would have been another. Yeah, like Would you, you ever pick it up now? Yeah, I wanna learn how to play the guitar. Like it's a lot of things I'm gonna do when I turn thirty. Like that's like a goal. Like play Why wait till you're thirty? Yeah. I've got too much going on to be trying to learn instruments right now. I'm, I'm trying to get this music cracking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. I mean and, and it is. You literally just came off uh a performance on WGN. Yeah, man. How was that? It was awesome. I went to the gas station today to put some power steering fluid in my car, and this dude was walking by. And he kept, he was staring at me, and I was like, mm. "Yeah, you know." When you and he was, yeah, exactly. And he was like, he was like, "Man, I don't want to be weird, but like, was you on TV the other day?" And I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "You was on WGN?" I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Man, I was getting ready, and I saw you, and it was so good." He was like, "Look at this!" And he pulled out his phone, and he actually recorded the performance so he could remember who I was. Wow, um, that's dope. You know, and WGN like, like the most popular. No, it's legit, and I didn't know that. Show, so a bunch yeah. of people followed me off of it. Like, I and this is no shade to Fox, but I did Fox last year, and none of that happened. Like, mm-hmm. people, well, somebody commented. <laughs> somebody commented. I didn't know where you was going. I know where you was going. Uh, I already somebody commented last night. Like, yeah, like I saw the performance, and I bought tickets right after that, and so. It was like wow like and i didn't think much of it i was just like this is gonna be fun yeah. but it not only was it fun but it was fruitful but it was great uh didn't do the, do a full band just had some singers and a yeah. dj and it was really nice and you like, did you one ever of my favorite like, joints thank you yeah did you ever feel like you would ever get to the point that you are now like where you can literally be out pumping gas or what you say putting fluid in fluid your car, in car and yeah. somebody's, somebody's like damn i saw you, you on tv <laughs> um yeah i mean it's a goal you know what i'm saying like I don't, i'm not i'm not a fame person but like recognition off the music is something i've always wanted so like as it i've had little spurts you know in the past and i just it's always like cool i'm doing something right if you can recognize me you know what i'm saying i want to know like what's more uh, was it nerve-wracking you know performing in front of pretty much on tv Mm -hmm. compared to what's more nerve-wracking pretty much performing on tv Mm -hmm. or your actual concerts in a live setting concerts definitely like ain't so the way tv is just like this like you're performing, but I'm looking. I literally was looking at a wall. Like if you look at the video when we're looking ahead, we're not looking at nothing. Like mm-hmm. so, it's like you're not really. Ain't no pressure. You can see like the performance on the monitor a little bit, but like it really ain't nothing. When we did Fox last year, it was very similar. Like we were outside, but we were facing a window instead of facing the people who were walking behind us. So it's not all we got to do is do the song like we normally do right. it. Um, but like when it's a crowd, like, and I don't really get nervous when I perform, but that's more nerve wracking just because like. It's like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Show and prove. Either people pay money or this is people's first time seeing you. And you got to, like, leave them with a good impression. So that, that's obviously going to make more pressure. But, like, I'm happy. I'm on TV. I'm just excited to be here. You know? <laughs> like, they was playing clips of my videos and stuff. I'm like, it's people seeing this in their living room. A video that I directed, seeing this in their living room, seeing my name. Like, that's just that just causes excitement for me. So, so yeah. hearing that you directed, you know. Previous videos, yeah. so you you pretty much all hands on, yeah, with uh, your music, with everything, yeah. Uh, I mean, what's something people wouldn't think that you that you're that you that you're tied in when it comes to when the music? Comes, um, that you do. I mean, I would probably say the video stuff. Like, I've directed every single video I put out. Um, and so, so even the one I'm gonna drop a video either next week or week after that for myself, and like I directed that too. Um, and like I love the whole film aspect of everything. Like I have. And like I work with people who do a phenomenal job, but like it yeah, all sparks from my idea. You know what I'm yeah, that's Thank why I'm much. over here. Um, hey, you see yeah, the I'm face. Like, that's oh, what I'm yeah. like, wow. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I, I thought you had a production team. Oh no, we got a we got a we got a squad. But like the idea comes from from, you. from here. Do you are um, you one of those people? Not to cut you off, but are you crazy. one of those artists that will have a song in mind and see the visual? Yeah. Because I've talked to a lot of yeah. like artists. They'll be like, I, I was writing a song and I saw the video the moment I was that's writing. That's 100 percent me. Like I. 
literally word for word you said something i probably would have said later like that's how <laughs> that's how it comes about and i've had these crazy ideas for videos since i started rapping i never had the funds to execute a lot of the grandiose ideas i would have in my head and like now i'm finding ways to finesse i'm not still don't got the money but like i'm finessing <laughs> around it you know like with the ain't no video a lot of people think that that's like oh where, where were y'all at like whose house was that blah 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 and it looks like we're in all of these different rooms we are in a room that's maybe this big maybe two of these rooms you know what i'm saying okay. but it's like every 10 feet was a different setup so we were able to finesse it to make it look like you were in we're in all these different spots you know what i'm saying so it's just like how can we finesse our way to quality content bro you know what, what they say you gotta use quality. what you got yeah yep. literally yeah <laughs> and then like the video for myself uh big shout out to the production company that helped us do it called intertwine it's a guy named josh who who did the cinematography and the dude named aj who did who helped me with production and they like executed this idea i didn't know how to when you see it you'll see the idea but it's like multiple me's in the video and i didn't know how to do that and they did it and it was like super duper cool and so like you know people you just find the right people to, to help make your get your vision out reality. you don't need a million dollars to make a good video man say that one more time yeah, right well, you don't need <laughs> a, like when drake spent that money that budget on the god's plan video and he that, handle, he handle why that why he has a million dollar video budget this is a million dollars for a three-minute project. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You better get that money. You don't need a million dollars. Nobody needs a million dollars to shoot a music video. You know what That's I'm saying? Big fact. If me and my homies can make the videos we made, imagine what we could do with five stacks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Look, look at that, look so, at Chief Keith Grove. Yeah. yeah. They was outside yeah. on the block yeah. with, with toting they toting was, hammers. They was in the crib with ankle bracelets <laughs> on. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Yeah. So Hey, with that yeah. being said, we actually gonna get into a quick music break. We finna play some flex on my mama. Then we're gonna get into some OG. Steve-O, some Elijah oh, Love, Steve-O. Tony Rowe Mitty, and uh, we'll be right back with the homie Matt. I'll holler at you. Make sure to check out the Illness playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Yo, what's up everybody? It's your girl Pretty Right, and you are now tuned in to Illinois Radio as you should be every Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, I don't know what you're listening on, whether it's your, your iPhone, your Android, but if it's it's Apple Spotify. Apple Spotify. You was doing real. You was doing really good. I don't care if it's your Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor. We everywhere. SoundCloud. Um, you need to hit that subscribe button. And if you're watching my beautiful face on YouTube, don't you? Don't you just love seeing it? Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell. Don't neglect that little bell because that little bell is gonna notify you every time we drop a video. And I know you don't want to miss a beat. Period. Shout out to our sponsor, Blue Vodka, because I'm over here a little, um, little blue, litty. <laughs> a little blue in a good way. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? <laughs> but we chopping it up with the homie Mad Muse. How you feeling? Feel great. Feel great. I love you all's energy. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you that means so much. You like your energy. I love too. you. Have a natural. Yeah, he just vibing. Like, yeah, very vibe. natural. Oh, thanks, man. So like, nice. where you get all this naturalness from? You know, you got the natural the herb, look, yeah. the, the hair. Um. To my- Get the water. <laughs> they're, not our, not they're not our sponsor. sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he like, uh, hello. <laughs> said that's so smooth. Um, it's from my parents. Like, my family is just super, like, genuine and chill. Like, I didn't grow up around no bougie people. I didn't grow up around no pompous people. You know what I'm saying? Like, my parents is, like, super down to earth, super yeah, laid back. Yeah, they made you play the piano. That's not yeah. typical. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, they, they be chilling. And then, like... I, I think that my mother and father are both sociable people, and when I uh, and I, I mean I didn't grow up super like that. I was really shy, but then once I got to college, I was like, man, I'm trying to get these raps off. I'm finna know everybody, and then I just became a super social person, and it, it and I don't know, it, it became good. Like I was really, especially on my campus at NIU, I was just like. I was a connector to so many different friend groups because I just talked you to seem everybody. You like that yeah. person, that yeah. middleman. Not the middleman, but, <laughs> yeah. but like, the middleman. Yeah, know. like, yeah. And so, so, but I think it started from just seeing how my family moves. Like, everybody in my family is genuine and down to earth. So. Mm. Well, what, what did yeah. your, you know, what did your parents preach and teach you the most? Um, man, I'm old, so I don't know what I remember. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I think my parents were just about, like, respect. And like love, you know what I'm saying? Like it was really just they they didn't obviously they didn't take disrespect and they didn't take us disrespecting other people, you know. That was like a huge thing. And um like 
when it like when it came they I didn't have the type of parents who was like yeah like don't let nobody punk you like fight back and but like my dad taught us like how to defend ourselves but it was like yo like chill you know what I'm saying like stay cool stay calm stay collected you know what I'm saying walk away from certain things like turn the other cheek type stuff you know and yeah that was like the main stuff and like they they both funny they both crack all the jokes so I think like <laughs> subconsciously they also also taught us to like enjoy life and like laugh you know and everything you just said is in your music, music. I was literally yeah? to oh, everything it reflects so much in your music Dang, I feel like you could tell a lot about an artist in their music based on their tell a lot about their upbringing based on their based music based on their music that's facts yeah that's right. yeah, and I definitely just got that. That I will not play that, but we play. We play <laughs> yeah. all day, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like, man, real. you said look. I know your your um recent single, which we'll be playing uh, in a little bit. Myself, First of all, can we go ahead? Um, I was no, about I was to talk just, about the EP. No, we are, we are. Okay. I was just finna say, like in in, in his recent single that he released, yeah. um, it's a very loving single, like love yourself, mm-hmm. yeah. take care of yourself, self love. Yeah. And it's Facts. good to hear that come from a guy as well, because I feel like that's a narrative oh, yeah. that women push very often, more but than the dudes. way more than guys. You, it's I feel like it's very rare that you catch a male artist that's even pushing that message, that narrative, like, hey, love yourself, love you, you know. Uh, agreed. Yeah. So, well, uh, I mean, let's actually jump into your EP. Yeah. Um, we we got to talk about the title. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Love and yes. We, yeah. Break down the title for everybody. Let people know where <laughs> where this came from. Um. Well, last summer I dropped the album called Nappy Talk. Mm-hmm. Um. And so, like, the the real I've never told nobody this. So here we go. So like, I had if you actually go back and look at the post that when I posted Nappy Talk last year, I put like in the caption like you know. My new album, Nappy Talk, is here, blah, blah, blah. Go enjoy this project full of love and nappiness. Because Nappy Talk is about self-love. Mm-hmm. And then five months later, I was like, yo. Love and that nappiness. That sounds really yeah, cool. Like, <laughs> like, it was like, it was like, oh, a bar. You know, it was cute when I put it on there. But I was like, when I came up with the concept for the project, I was like, yeah, that, that fits perfectly for this next project. And then it also keeps this, like, nappy series going. You so you running saying? with yeah. that? I mean, uh, I, I don't want to say running with it, but like, is that a consistent a thing that you'll be that like a yeah, about. like a series? This might be the last. This, it might be a two part series. Yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know how long I'm gonna go with it, but it works. Like it. It's working for now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we'll see. We'll see what comes. Yeah. I mean, why why EP instead of a a project, a, a album? Because I I really think of EPs is like super conceptual, and it's like mm-hmm. this project is super conceptual. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? Um, and I don't. I, I'm not comfortable putting out a full length album just because I put a whole lot of work into my music, like each song, and I want to make sure I have the right amount of backing, both fan wise and uh, infrastructure wise, before I put out a long project because I I value every single song I'm making. If I put out a project that long and it doesn't get the response that or at least doesn't hit the amount of ears that I believe it deserves I'm going to be hurt and so gotcha. mm-hmm. you know I'm like putting out these short short little projects till to the time is right so do you uh feel like albums are devalued nowadays within this new generation um i mean definitely but also i think that there and and i was somebody a podcast i follow put up a post a couple of weeks ago about like what's a, a rare take on the music industry and i said you know People think that, like, the music industry is, like, going sideways and haywire and this is messed up and that is messed up. But it's because they're only tuned in to mainstream music. Mm -hmm. And I don't – I think that in the underground or independent or, like, the not radio world, albums are doing just fine. You know what I'm saying? That's true. And so I don't think the album is devalued, but I do think that artists put a lot of work into albums when they do them. And it takes a lot of focus and a lot of, like, strategic planning to execute an album rollout properly. Um, and I don't think a lot of artists know that. So if you're getting these seven-song good music Kanye joints, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I followed that model only because it was right for me, you know what I'm saying? And then I think a lot of people just put out singles because it's like album is a big deal. Like you it gotta, and, and a lot of us are just grinding and trying to be heard right now. And so... Am I finna spend all of this time, you know, and this is not a me thing, I just think in general. Am I finna spend all of this time trying to put out an album when I can be building my fan base right now and dropping singles until the time is right to do one? So I think it's still valuable, but I think that it just has to be executed 
properly. And if that makes sense. Very well said. Yeah, yeah. and I was going to say, I feel like you're on your way to oh, executing a... Conceptually, just in general. Yeah. Like, you that don't really nice. get conceptual yeah. art. You guys are so kind. Hey, <laughs> oh, I really well, appreciate look, it. Look, we don't bring nobody up here that we wouldn't yeah, exactly. be nice well, to. <laughs> that's about like, you're, you're, like she said, your albums are very... Cons- uh, I can't get it out. Say it for me. Thank you. I almost said something else. I almost said consecutive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, consecutive? Back to back, back to back to back. But you, you're consecutive in a good way, though. You're yeah. not saturating, uh, you know, you're oh, not yeah. saturating your audience, which I love yeah. uh, about Consist- your craft. Consistent, but not like saturated. Exactly. And and like I said, the, the conceptions. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, it's like the way, not to cut you off. No, wait. But I think it's more so with you, the way your music makes you feel. Uh-huh. Like, I think one thing that gets lost in like the newer generation of music is just music for our ears. And it's not music that makes us feel any type of way. But, like, mm-hmm. your music got a feel to it. Like, I was listening to Love and Nappiness while I was getting ready today. And I'm like. Oh, that's dope. That's okay. Dope. So many people said that to me today. That makes me super No, cool. yeah. That's like, good. I was actually listening to it. I mean, obviously for this reason. Yeah, I would like facts. to be able to actually <laughs> comment on it. But, like, it was actually, like, super enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I was actually, like, sad when it was over. Not sad, but it was like, damn, it's over. You left wanting more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did. Yeah. That's, I did. That's I, wanted, the goal. I wanted I, more. I want to know. What's your most personal record on um, Love and Happiness? Honestly, all of them. But most, either Family Steel or St. Matthew. Okay. Um, St. Matthew because I talk about stuff that I've never talked about in music before, which is this whole, like, God, relationship with God and, like, God's love and just the idea of God, like, and because I was raised a Christian, so like a lot mm-hmm. of folks, if you listen to my old stuff, you won't really hear that. Like you will never hear that. But St. Matthew, I think it exposes a completely different side of like who I am and like tells people more about me. And I think every song does that. Um, and then with Family Still, it's about my grandma who passed away and it's addressed to her. Um, and so like it's just it's super personal because I, I was playing it for somebody the other day and they was like, yeah, like I don't know none of the people you're talking about. But, but I like, feel that. I, I felt it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I'm like, yeah. And and I didn't even really realize and it wasn't intentional when I wrote it. It was just genuine from the heart. You, but like, it it's super about my people. You know? Did you find it hard to just like tap into yourself and be really like just vulnerable in your music and just be so transparent? Because I think a lot of artists mm-hmm. struggle with being transparent yeah. because they don't just know themselves fully yeah. or just like what like how they want to represent themselves um i know myself really well uh what i what i was not good at was translating my truest self to my raps mm. and so i think over the past few years my goal has just been how can i be me fully in these raps because i grew up on the the where you had to rap good mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying to be accepted so i spent so much time trying to become a good rapper like metaphors and similes and punchlines and oh I go hard you know what I'm saying and and that was such a big goal for me that I think I kind of lost sight of the not even lost sight I never really had sight of like oh you also need to be yourself. more genuine and more yourself mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so that was probably the hardest part it wasn't super difficult because I like to think of myself as a real nigga but you know what I'm <laughs> saying but it was still like I had to get over that hill of like okay stop being a rapper and just be yourself while you're rapping Mm. Wow, mm. that's a bar. It is. That's oh. low key a hey, bar. I damn near snap. Uh. Okay, because I'm like, hold on, wait. That's a bar. That's a bar. That's, that's a bar. That's, and that's really how you attain and grow your audience. Facts. Because the music that the lyrics you speak is what's going to stick with your with audience. Hump. That's yeah. how you get people through humps. Facts. And by you being real, it's somebody out there that's dealing with that's, what you're talking about. Relate, yeah. Love. So a lot of people that lost their grandma. <laughs> so yeah, they I lost my grandma. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, that's real. So I mean, you know, um, like I said, we got myself. Yeah, the joints cold. I know you Thank guys you. sent us over an exclusive listen way before yeah. the project dropped yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Um, I love it. I'm glad. <laughs> and I know you said the video was coming. Yeah. So actually, I'm premiering the video tomorrow at the Apple Store on Michigan Avenue. Hey, downtown. that's dope. It's free too. If y'all are free, pull up. Okay. What time? Um, five o'clock at the Apple Store. On five Michigan p.m. Avenue. Yep. Okay. Um, the one on Michigan? Yeah, downtown. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm premiering that. And they might drop next week. I don't know. I'm trying to promote this show, so I don't know if I have the capacity to both drop a video and sell tickets. We'll see what happens. Um, but if it do, it do. Uh, but, yeah, that, the video for it is coming out. So, 
Yeah, I'm excited. And you got the event at Shubas. Yep. So well, that's, sure that's that the right. big deal. Yeah, Shubas August 17th is the release show. Is this your yeah. first headliner? First ever headliner. I'm sad. Never, never did. You can't come? I'm going to be in Houston. Houston, Texas, baby. Dang, that's crazy. We'll pull up to Apple tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I might actually if you come. Can. Yeah. yeah, please, I'm, please pull yeah. up. That's going to be legit. That's going to be legit. Okay. Yeah, Damn, be this deal. is your first headliner. Yeah, never done one before. How yeah. do you feel? I'm getting more excited. It's a week away. So, like, now I'm like, okay, like, now that the project's out there and, like, people are hearing it and, like, even the rehearsals we've been having have been, the energy has just been so beautiful. Like, I'm, the, the same group I did WGN with is the same people I'm doing the show with. And so, like, the energy and the vibes have been real positive. So, I'm getting excited. Did but you, also, I need to sell these tickets. Did you, you <laughs> yeah, in fact, go buy tickets yeah. to that show, oh, period. Yeah. Go buy tickets. That, did think, you strategically plan to drop, like, your mixtape prior to the show? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because... I, I think so last year I did the release I mean the listening party before the project um, and what I learned what ended up happening was the project got pushed back a whole two months mm. so it was like dang we did this listening party too early and yeah and people were super geeked for it and then they had to wait two months for it and by the time it dropped like people were excited but that a lot of that excitement had dissipated you know so this time I was like no ain't gonna be no events no nothing like that until after it dropped like it, it can only benefit it because the events happening afterwards will make more people go and listen to it. And le- whereas if you do everything before, then it's like, oh, it's here now. You know, you want to find different ways to get ears to your stuff. You know, Big and facts. I also want to give people a week to listen to it and maybe learn the words. You know? Big facts. Well, I Big can facts. see people singing it now. Right. And yeah. Shubas is up north. Let people know who's on that lineup with you. Yeah, so on the bill, it'll be DJ Cash Era spinning. Um, Shout out to her. She's super yeah, dope. She's so great. Uh, she just did WGN with us, too. Uh, it'll be Luna Day, a phenomenal singer, a uh, phenomenal artist. Just her energy is just beautiful. She's a great person. And then my homie, Asar. Uh, I know y'all familiar with Asar. Yeah, um Asar. And that's just my guy. So I can hoop too. I'm just gonna, just gonna <laughs> let the world know that. Um, so he's gonna he's gonna be there, you know, spitting too. Um, and Asar, me and Asar go back. Asar actually helped me when I was on tour in 2017. He helped me set up the the show at U of I. Um, and so if that's it, why you okay, we'll talk yeah. about that off air. Okay, uh, <laughs> but it felt really good. It just feels good to kind of just keep connecting the dots. You know what I'm saying? It's like okay. You you threw me a oop. How can I throw you a oop? You know, that's a love. Yeah. He show is down there. Yeah. You have, uh, yeah. well, he graduated. He graduated. Right? graduated. graduated. Yeah. Uh, where can people? Well, they actually I ain't gonna say where can people find tickets because we gonna actually post the ticket link on oh, this video, uh, right. as well as real. your project. Yeah. Um. So for those listening in the in in in, in, in a short little minute, you can head over to Illinois dot co, uh, get those tickets as well as watch the <laughs> interview and stream <laughs> Love and Nappiness. Uh, let people know. Pretty much where they can get love and happiness. Uh, yeah. your, your, Twitter, your, Twitter, your Twitter, your Twitter, your Twitter handle, your, yeah. your IG, all of those things. And uh, again, introduce this single, my brother. I got you. Um, so I'm Matt Muse Twelve on all the social medias. Uh, Instagram and Twitter is only the only thing I really use. But if you use Facebook, just search Matt Muse, you'll find me. Um, love and happiness. My new EP is available on every single platform that you can imagine. Um, and if you want to both get a bundle of finding the link to the project and getting the ticket, MattMuse.live. Just type in mattmuse.live in your little search box and you'll find my website. Um, myself is the single we dropped last week featuring Joseph Chilliams um, and Mona Ree. Uh, and it's about loving myself. So each song on the project is about a different type of love. And this is it's two self-love songs. And this is the second self-love song. And yeah. And we're premiering a video tomorrow at the Apple Store downtown. So pull be up. Be there. At what time again? Five o'clock. Five yeah. uh, on the be dot. Be there five eight. on the dot. This no. is, I'm this like, is, this is, this is a, a CP store. Time, yeah, this is a corporation. I don't run until <laughs> them 3 p.m. It starts, it starts right, when tell it them starts. At three, and it and ends at 6.30. And we gone. Like, that's. So you got to be there or be square. Be there at three. Right. Look around, shop for some phones or something. Yeah, yeah. Be there. Yeah, three o'clock. That's what time we start. Yeah, don't go nowhere. Like, yeah.